This is a garden cane support, also known as a plant wigwam disc. And the basic idea is you take a, a cane and shove it through one of these eyelets here, and then you can build a, a frame for growing your beans up in the garden. And there's quite a few different designs of these out there, but they tend to be made from rather cheap recycled plastic. Uh, and I've had a few of these over the years snap on me, and they're not particularly cheap either. You pay best part of a pound for just one of these, even on eBay prices. So a few years ago, I decided to have a go at making my own. And these are made out of recycled milk bottle lids. I started collecting these and word got around. And before I knew it, I was coming home to bin bags full of these things that people were saving for me. So uh, I figured I needed to do something with them. So I granulated them all and started to produce a few garden accessories. And it's pretty much the same sort of concept. You just shove your canes up through the, uh, the little circular slots here and uh, build a frame to grow your beans up. Uh, one problem with recycled polyethylene is it tends to warp. Uh, this is because the outside circumference will shrink by about 1-2%, to 2 as will the inside, and obviously the outside is significantly larger, so you get more shrinkage, and it basically can't shrink flat, so you end up with uh, a kind of a, a Pringle shape, and it's even more noticeable when you do something that is a complete circle, like on this coaster, uh, and that's really bowed out in the middle as the thing is contracted. You can get around that by using uh, slightly different materials uh, or just packing it and letting it uh, solidify more in the mould but basically you're better off just using something which doesn't do that. The general concept of just having these little star shaped discs in the middle is fairly common. This I think is a, a cable bushing which uses uh, a similar sort of concept. Uh, I recycled my version on here to make these sock pairers which I did for a school project a few years ago and this is polyurethane so uh, it doesn't have the brittleness problems I had found with these that uh, after one season the little wings started breaking off and uh, not ideal so uh, that was that one and something even softer this was another school's project which was probably before its, uh, before its time the idea of this was uh, use one of these little star shapes to hold your earbuds in your ears so they don't drop off when you're jogging uh, and this band just clicks over the ear. Uh, we didn't get terribly far with this, I think uh, uh, it probably needed a few prototype revisions to make it uh, really good uh, but this is a very soft uh, flexible elastomer, uh, too soft for what we were using and obviously too soft for these. So the material that I think I'm going to use for this is actually a thermoplastic polyolefin and this is basically polypropylene but with uh, uh, ethylene propylene diene monomer in it so uh, it's basically a synthetic rubber blended in with well copolymerized in technically with the polypropylene uh, and this particular material I picked up uh, a few years ago it had gone off to a recycling company along with a load of colorant and uh, they couldn't reprocess it so they stuck it on eBay uh, it turned out that this wasn't silver colorant it was silver plastic it's actually a material called sequel uh, which is mostly used in the automotive trade for producing bumpers and trim panels and things like this. And it's got a, a pretty good impact resistance and uh, low temperature resistance as well, which is obviously what you need for car panelling. Uh, so I've used this a few times in the past. It's nice and easy to mould. It doesn't suffer from the uh, shrinkage problems that you get with pure polyolefins. Uh, and uh, also this is UV stabilised because obviously it's intended for long-term outdoor use on uh, cars and so on. So I'm thinking if I remake something like this, but do the job properly and make it out of a weather resistant, slightly softer material, which should have the kind of consistency of this polyurethane, uh, then we should end up with uh, a product which is significantly better than what I did before and probably better than some of the alternatives that are currently out there. So I've looked at a few designs and there are various designs for these doing the rounds. When I did this one, I foolishly asked somebody who was into flower arranging how many holes I should have on it and she said oh they always do odd numbers uh, well I'm not convinced that if you're growing beans you're too worried about odd numbers so uh, these have got 10 on and 5 on and the more common ones uh, are kind of along the, these lines where you've got 6 or 8 and because these may end up having to get posted out uh, and because the Royal Mail have certain limits on the post on the sizes of envelopes. Uh, that one won't quite fit in an envelope cleanly. That one will. So I'm thinking I'm going to go for 
uh, that sort of size and with a little bit of pimping up this is the design that I've come up with so basically it's a just a simple square plate of aluminium which I've actually got already I've already trimmed this out and marked it up and then I just need the usual bolt holes some magnets some locating points vents I'm going to feed it off the middle and use a kind of uh, star shaped gate here with some small gates going onto the main cavity uh, that should allow it to flow quite well uh, might need a bit of extra venting around it but we'll see how we get on I'm also going to add a little tag at the bottom because I'm going to do this single sided uh, so all of the part is going to be stuck in the cavity and it may be a little tricky to get out so I'm thinking if I put a little tag on the end uh, I've got something I can actually pick into and peel the thing out if necessary and then I can just trim that off at the end. Uh, would like to do a double sided moulding but I think I'll stick with a single sided if, uh, to begin with and I can add the other plate if necessary. So I'm going to add a couple of guide pin holes just in case I do need to put a secondary plate on this and that'll just be feeding in through the back. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking I'll just radius the edges like I did on these coasters because uh, it just makes it a little bit smoother and although this is flat on the back it still feels reasonably good on the front and if necessary I can colour these black but I kind of like the silver effect on these to be honest so uh, it's a colour technically called tungsten metallic uh, but uh, it looks silver to my eyes anyway so that's what we're going to have a go at and uh, it shouldn't be too complicated most of this I can cut out with a, a 3mm or 3.5mm slot drill so it's just pocketing everything out, doing the little fins uh, on the discs uh, and then a little bit of radiusing around the edges. Uh, and uh, the rest of it is fairly academic, just the bits and pieces I need for uh, the housekeeping on the mould. So uh, with a bit of luck I can get this done in a day or two, certainly a weekend project. Uh, and then I'll dig out some of this. I got about 100 kilos of this and I didn't pay a great deal for it. So uh, it's sitting around doing nothing. I don't need to dry it or anything, it moulds really well. So uh, no shortage of plastic and uh, should be a fairly straightforward project to do, to be honest, because that one didn't take long and it moulded fine. So anyhow, that's uh, the mission for today. Here's my metal. Let's get it set up and start cutting a few holes. I had a little bit of shaping there, I think I was going in a little bit too quick, but there are only two uh, guy pin holes and two magnet holes, there will need to be some more top and bottom, but I haven't got the distance on the Y axis to do that in one pass, so I'll just need to index this along at some point, but I can pick up off these holes uh, to just add the rest of the, the holes I need at a later stage, that's not going to be too tricky. Uh, next stage, I'm going to use a, a nice sharp 3.5mm 3 flute carbide slot drill. And this is going to take out the bulk of the cavity. So this is going to take a little while, but uh, it'll run itself. So we'll get on with that and hope it works. I'm going one mil deep on this. I'm going to run it at about 15 millimeters a minute. Uh, might be able to speed that up slightly, but we'll see how well it cuts uh, and take it from there.
Right, it's taken about, I don't know, two and a half, three hours maybe. So uh, we're nearly there. I now need to run around the edges with a uh, three mil ball nose and I'm going to do the central hub as well. And then just to create a bit of an edge around uh, the grips, I'm going to run in with a two mil slot drill. These are the, uh, the vent channels I've just added, so I've then got some vents to add there and I may add some more here and here when I index the plate across. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to re-drill these two bolt holes because uh, I'm uh, guide pin holes because I'm not 100% happy with the way that wobbled when uh, I drilled that out so maybe I'll just move those across and do that again but uh, it's looking good so far so I'll get set up for the three mil ball nose cuts we'll do those and then uh, around the, the grips and then it's just a bit of tidying up Done a quick pass around on the rim with a 3mm ball nose, but I'm not 100% happy with the way that it's cutting. This is quite a, an old bit actually, so I think it's a bit blunt. Uh, got a new carbide one here though, so we'll swap it out and have another go and see if I can clean that cut up a bit. resorted to a little bit of cutting fluid on that but it seems to have done a much better job uh, I've still got a little bit of a rough edge around here where I began so uh, I'll probably just give this another quick finishing pass uh, and then do the bit in the centre Okay, the cavity is now all done. I'll need to give that a bit of a scrub with some wire wool just to clean it up a little bit at the end. These are the vents that I've just cut 50 microns deep. And I'll probably add some more here when I index the plate across. Uh, what else have we got? I've got some little referencing slots in the corners in case I need to put this plate back on. So all that is left is doing the uh, central feed. So I need some gates around the edge. Uh, and a, a little feed well in the middle 
and that's pretty much it apart from drilling a few holes so uh, see if we can get some slightly better lighting here we go uh, so basically right battling with decent lighting here either I can have enough lighting for me to see what I'm doing and then it swamps out the camera or if I tilt it away the camera seems to get a better picture but then I can't see what I'm doing so anyway uh, we'll soldier on the cavity is now all finished uh, need to do the central feed and some gates I've just added the vents on either side uh, and these are 50 microns deep so I've referenced off either side to make sure they are the correct depth also got some little uh, referencing slots in the corners in case I need to put this plate back on probably won't but uh, it's worth doing them just in case so uh, once I've cut that we're about ready to index the plate across and add the final bolt holes that I need uh, and probably I'll add a couple of extra vents around the edges just in case but uh, very nearly complete so I'll get set up and do the the gates uh, and then uh, the little feed well in the centre uh, I think that's everything apart from just shuffling it across Yeah, I think I'll get away with that. Just dipping down, and these are on a slight taper as well, so they should break off quite easily. But I think we'll probably get away with that. I can always open them up later on if necessary. Yeah, okay, I'll call that, leave it as it is. Okay, I think that will do. Right, time to, no, before I shuffle the plate, I just want to drill a couple of extra holes uh, just so I can relocate those guide pins. Uh, right, I'll do that, move the plate over and finish it off. Almost it. I just want one more feature. Are the small vents on this side, and I've already done the ones down the bottom here. And what I now want to do with uh, a fairly chunky slot drill is just come in above the plate and ramp my way down to just connect with this edge, maybe about a quarter of a millimetre down, 
uh, and that will just give me a little bit of a tab so that when it comes to taking these out I can get a fingernail under there and help peel it out. I might be able to get them out without but I may as well cut it while I'm here. So get that set up and uh, then we're done. I think that will do. Uh, obviously I'm going to have to cut this little bit off but I'm only going a couple of hundred microns deep so it's not going to be uh, much of a, a blemish on the thing. Apart from that I think it's now complete so I just need to drill through some of these holes uh, and then we can give it a mould and see if our little disc actually does what I intend it to do. Time to give it a go. So uh, The mould is Reasonably good, I think. We'll find out very shortly. Uh, which holes does this go in? Uh, no. that one. Must be that one. Find it there. Oops. our mould and then over here I can unlock that the screen is going haywire because it's quite warm today and despite the fact I've got uh, fans and heat sinks installed on the main circuit boards it's a 30 year old machine and it doesn't like the heat too much so all of this uh, gobbledygook that's coming up is just symptomatic of it overheating uh, I'm going to start off with 8 cubic centimetres I've weighed out one of these coasters that I uh, did, uh, and it's about the same sort of size. I think the, uh, the wigwam disc is a little bit smaller, but these are about 11 grams. So call it one gram per cubic centimetre, and we shouldn't be too far off. Modest amount of back pressure, uh, and the injection going in about half speed, 30 cubic centimetres per second. It should fill in less than a second. Uh, and about 1,000 bar. And that's pretty much all we need. Temperatures, I'm running at around 200, slightly hotter on the tip. And uh, that should be all we need to give this a go. Now, the material that is in the machine at the moment is a polyurethane. And that's a polar molecule, whereas this stuff that I'm going to be running, this uh, TPO, thermoplastic polyolefin, that's a non-polar plastic, so they're not going to blend. It's basically like mixing oil and water, so I'm expecting the first few cycles to be a bit rough, uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, it'll take a while to purge out. But then hopefully we'll get some good mouldings, and with a better look, they'll work and grip onto a cane. So uh, let's just get this thing set up and running, and we'll give it a go on the moulding side. Right. Might need to cut that tab a little bit deeper. So I need to fix that. But they are coming out okay, so uh, I just need to make this tab here a little bit deeper so that I've got something to extract this with. But I'm not getting any short shots there, it's filling quite well. Uh, and yeah, I'll we'll test that in a minute. But let's uh, just run a few more off. Not a lot of material in, I only want a handful for testing.
because I just thought to go down. Yeah, okay, that is going to need some adjustment. nice. I think that uh, centre gate just pops out nice, no sharp edges, so that works well. I think it would look better if it was double sided, so maybe I will need to cut another plate. Right, okay, I'll empty this and we'll have a quick look at them. Well, it's not too bad. Uh, one or two issues, obviously, that I need to resolve. Uh, for a start, I'm having to dig in with uh, a pointy thing just to get these out because it's not actually flowed into this little tag that I cut on the mould. Uh, so uh, I can just put this back on. I've got my referencing marks. Uh, so no big deal to put this on and just take that slot down a little further so that I can pick it out. Clearly, the way this is flowing, I'm going to get weld lines directly opposite and that could be a bit of an issue because uh, theoretically there's going to be a weld line there and that if that's flexed enough that could break but with this being a fairly heavily plasticized polyolefin it's got a lot of there we go that one's snapping through it's got a lot of uh, synthetic rubber in it so it should have reasonable resistance but it is cracking along there uh, and also this has probably still got some uh, polyurethane coming through which isn't going to help so maybe I need to just do something to uh, get that weld line moved uh, not entirely sure what I'll have to have a think about that uh, but if I go double sided obviously I can double this up and uh, that will make it a bit easier so that's something uh, do they actually work well the central bits do seem to pop through the gates break out quite nicely and cleanly there's no rough edges on there at all, so that's uh, working exactly as I wanted. And it's got these uh, tapered feeds on them. And then the acid test, if I get a stick, do these things actually push through? So, oop, yes, they do. Well, I have done this design before, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's about right. So, yeah, that's uh, probably good enough. I could stiffen this up slightly, but it's always going to be a bit variable depending on the thickness of uh, the stick that you're using so um, not too bad uh, I think I'll make a, a slight modification on the tool and maybe I will do a second side because I don't need to do the whole geometry on the second side I really only just need to do uh, the rims and that will just uh, give this a little bit more strength at these weak spots on the edges uh, but apart from that not too bad at all and uh, because these oops, because these are UV resistant, they should be a bit more durable than the stuff that I've used in the past. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at. I might give it another tweak, but uh, not too bad for a weekend project. Well, I couldn't leave it at that, obviously. So I've gone and cut the other side of the plate. I didn't bother with all the um, little wings and things on here. Uh, just basically reinforced all of the edges. Uh, and that seems to where it's less shiny seems to have uh, made this quite a bit more robust uh, obviously the the flaps are still the same and it's now fully rounded which uh, feels a bit better I think uh, with hindsight if I was doing this again rather than having the split uh, where it meets the weakest point I would probably rotate these round slightly so that that weld line was actually adjacent the rear of one of these wings and that would give it a little bit more strength uh, and I think I might run a few of these at some point in slightly softer material, possibly add a bit of, uh, I don't know, EVA or something to soften them up a little bit, just to make them a little easier. Uh, they do still fit onto a cane, although you need a relatively thick cane for that to work. If I go to the other end where it's a little bit thinner, then 
they're not quite as grippy so uh, I think maybe a slightly smaller version would be useful and uh, rather than leave it at that and stop there I also made these little bean clips which go around the canes as well you can get these uh, off the shelf they're fairly common but I haven't seen any which actually clip on to a cane uh, which I think would be uh, a slightly preferable solution certainly when I'm growing things in the yard uh, I don't want to have to leave these loose on the cane because obviously they slip down so I've done three different sizes of those I've done some uh, smaller ones which uh, actually fit uh, on plant sticks uh, so for smaller plants, climbing plants, clematis or something perhaps they would be suitable and then a uh, medium size which uh, seems to work fairly well on most applications and then a large one because uh, obviously plants grow so being able to swap these out for slightly bigger ones would be preferential later on so these are the molds that I've done for that I've only done single cavities uh, really because this is a bit of an experiment so that's the medium and then this one is the small and then the larger one again I think maybe a slightly softer compound would be useful uh, and obviously if I needed a lot of these then I would, I would do a multi-cavity mould but uh, I can run two of these at the same time because I've got two feed points on the moulding machine so I put one of these top one of these bottom and uh, I've just run a few of these off and circulated them amongst local gardening enthusiasts uh, list a few of these on eBay perhaps see if anybody else wants them but uh, that's another project out of the way uh, I actually started this last year and didn't quite get around to finishing it so um, it's a bit late in the season again now but uh, anyhow they'll they'll do so uh, that's something that I was uh, working on last year and finishing off this year in between the lockdown periods <laughs>